Joining us now in a CNBC exclusive is Vice Media CEO Nancy Dubuque at Post 9. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let's talk a little bit about the details of this deal, why you're buying Refinery29 and what it means in terms of uh, the revenue picture for Vice Media. Great, thank you. Um, we're really excited about the brand. I think it's incredibly complimentary to what we are already doing at Vice, um, additive to our digital business. Um, what that team has done in terms of building out their own franchises, their originals business, their experiential business with 29 rooms, I think is a great compliment for Vice. Um, obviously, it's a very female-driven business, which is complementary to the business that we already have. Um, and given that we are also in, um, you know, global in our nature at Vice, it's a great opportunity for us to be able to take them into some of the other countries that we already reach. There's a number of reports out there that uh, say that this deal, cash and largely stock, it values Refinery29 at about $400 million, but that the valuation for Vice now is $4 billion. Is that right? We're, you know, we don't, we're, that's all speculative. You know, valuations are speculative um, uh, in nature. I think that people like to talk about our valuation because what we do know is that we're the largest, you know, digital media company out there and that will set the market in a merger environment. Um, you know, what we do know is that we're differentiated in this space and it's very, very difficult to replicate what we've been able to do. Um, and so, you know, a valuation is a point in time and, you know, we don't comment on what that'll be until it, it's relative to a sale or a public offering, which is not what we're doing right now. Vox and New York Media just got together a few days ago and we keep hearing that these consolidations, these get-togethers, they're not out of necessity, they're out of opportunity. But the, the, the overall environment would seem to suggest different. Uh, Facebook and Google have just been wringing a lot of profit out of digital advertising. It looks like companies are looking for other revenue streams, like e-commerce, which Refinery29 has. What is really the impact of the giants on digital advertising? Are you trying to diversify because of their strength? Yeah, I mean, world? we've already diversified. I think it's not just Facebook and Google. I mean, all of media is going through massive transformation. We're seeing mergers in traditional media as well. And, you know, that's creating a market when there's an opportunity for the right companies to come together, you know, take that opportunity. But I don't think it's scale just for scale's sake, right? It has to be the right quality brand, the right fit for audience reasons, um, also executable, right? You know, we don't want to take on something that's not imminently executable for us. And we feel that we've, you know, delivered on the plan that we set forth about a year and a half ago when I joined. We're continuing to make incredible progress. Um, and taking on refinery is something that's complementary to the strategy. It's not, we're not detouring from what we set out to do. And I think that's important in all of these conversations. And I, you know, I think that the New York Mag and Vox deal makes a lot of sense for Jim too. He's a great operator. Um, and you know, that makes sense. It's not detouring from what those companies have set out to do. Well, for so long, we've thought about Vice as this adrenaline filled, almost bad boy kind of network and brand. And you talk about an offset. Should we still think of ICE that way, or is it yeah, changing? Yeah, I mean, I, we don't want our brand to change. And I think, um, you know, we serve that audience, but we also address what the audience is asking for. And audiences have gotten, you know, the younger audiences looking for different kinds of content. And um, we've been a reflection of young audiences from, you know, Gen X to today. And so that bad boy attitude of Gen X is transforming today to young people really wanting answers about the environment and wanting answers about what's happening in the world. So you know, we reflect what's happening in the youth and we reflect what's happening in this brave new space that we're all going into. Um, so I think that the bad boy nature is really about asking tough questions about what's happening in the world and disrupting what people might think are of as norms. And, and that's really what the bad boy is about. Nancy, thanks for joining us exclusively on the heels of this deal. My Appreciate pleasure. It. Thank you very much for having me.